Hello, this is Tom from antidashproton.com, and I'm on part four of my explanation of how to use a Geiger counter. Let's test some stuff now. I think in the very beginning I, I told you you must establish a background count before you test things. That means you run the Geiger counter for a period of time in an area, and you see what you get. These instantaneous figures that I'm seeing right here are nice to look at when you're testing things, but they're not good for long-term statistical trends, which is how you really know what's going on. For most Geiger counters, you can set up some kind of timer. Most of them have a timer ability or a total. If it has a timer, you can usually set the timer to the number of minutes that you want to time. And if it has a total button, then usually what you do is you start the total and you start a pocket watch. And you come back in like 10 or 20 minutes. And what you do is you divide counts by the number of minutes that you did it. And that's how you do a time count. And it's important to do a time count so that you know. I know that this area right here <clears throat> is generally between 12 and 14. It fluctuates a little. If I did a four or five hour long count, I would get a really good statistical average, and I know my statistical average comes out to 14. Now let's test some things. First, first off, the old-fashioned potassium salt. Everybody's seen this a thousand times. By the way, before anybody says anything, I know the plates do not tick because I've tested them for many, many times before. If you've seen my videos, you've probably even seen it. All right, you see my counts. Let me switch to counts per minute for you. 24 counts per minute. And as you can see, when I get the Geiger counter pretty close, it should go up. See? So I don't want to touch the Geiger counter to the actual. I want you to see. You get a pretty good amount off of potassium. Usually 20 to 30 counts per minute. Make sure not to get your instrument contaminated. Also potassium chloride salt, so it's not very much contamination. We can just sit it right on top of it and see what it gets. Not much because most of it won't get through the window, but a little bit of it does. Okay, when testing, notice the back now has powder on it. That powder will emit radioactive pulses, giving me a false reading. Never contaminate your instrument. I've done so to show you. And this is light salt, so I'm going to wipe it off on my pants and get it off my monitor. If it were something real, you wouldn't want to do that. Notice now it's on my pants. And you see it got into the pants, and that's going to stay there for a while. So the point is, Light salt is not dangerous, of course, but when testing other things, you might want to take into account that that could have been, that right there could have been, you know, uh, radi ra uh, radium powder or something, and that would have been a totally different story. All right. At the store, they sell these things. Notice this is potassium chloride. Potassium chloride pellets, like this, contain potassium-40. There they are. These are potassium pills. Now, my fingers aren't putting off too much, so let's grab a pill. Ah, crap. Um, okay, I'm doing really great with these pills today. Sometimes I'm trying to hold a camera at the same time. Now, I'm going to gently put this pill up against the instrument, try not to contaminate it too much. Not very much. If I left this instrument running at a time count for about an hour, though, I would notice a different story. Instead of my 14 counts per minute, I'd probably be up around 17 or 18. When you run your counter for an hour and you get a, even one uh, count per minute more, that's a significant difference. It's not when we're just sitting here looking at it. And that's the reason you always run many, many hours worth of testing. Many people have said on YouTube that you can't test granite correctly, you know, you can't test for radon, you can't test the, uh, your food for contamination. Well, you can, but you have to use the long-term statistical approach. You can't just expect that it's going to show up immediately. It takes a while. You have to be meticulous about it. Also, remember, 
when, when testing, never, ever eat or drink food or touch your face or mouth. It is a smart idea never to do that. So. All right. Never do that. It's bad for you. Because you could, of course, get something in your food. See? Oh, no. That's contaminated. Well, not really, but you get the point. Okay. When testing with a Geiger counter, it is a well-known fact that you can never test ever too slowly. Hold the Geiger counter, put your hand up like this. See how my finger is just to drop below the area and rub it carefully. Never do this, of course, if you had a contaminated surface, but if you were testing like granite or something, which isn't necessarily dangerous just to be on. Hey, I can see my face in the reflection. You can never test too slowly, and you'll get these random clicks all of a sudden. Click, click, click. Like that. And you'll be like, what? Was there radiation there? Put your, put it back. Nothing. As you move, you generate electrostatic charge, which attracts alpha particles to the receptor, to the tube. And that's why it does that. Click, click, click. So you stop and you wait a few seconds, and you see whether or not it comes back. If it doesn't come back after a couple seconds of waiting there, then you just, there's nothing really radioactive. You've just done what I just said. The same effect works when you're testing things like brick. See? Nice juicy piece of brick. I got a couple clicks, right? Oh no, is it radioactive? No. The reason it is, is because I went over and it generated electrostatic charge. And then that attracted alpha particles. So ever so gently move your counter over something. This is when you're spot testing. It's always better just to take this device put it here and leave it for about, I don't know, an hour on a time total. That would tell you for sure what the actual statistical average is. <sighs> Remember, you'd want to put it on a table like right about here. And you'd probably want to run it for an hour. You'd want to put it on a table and run it right here for an hour as well and see what the difference is. And also put it over here a few feet and run it for an hour. Make sure you never expose your tube to sunlight for too long. It's not good for it. It damages it. It wasn't made for that. Never put it in a microwave either. That's also very stupid. That will hurt it, and it can't detect that. Microwave is non-ionizing radiation. It won't. A Geiger counter can't detect it. So there's no point in putting it there at all. Um, remember, you will always get counts in the air where you are, everywhere, because it's all around you. So it's important to run. Uh, statistical analysis to see what your environment's life, like, and that means just putting this down, setting it to time total, setting it for, god, more than five minutes. Five minutes is fine for a rapid count, but I like to say that you should put it there at least an hour, and then running it. In one hour's time, we would take the number of that's listed right here, divide it by 60, 60 minutes, and that would be our statistical, if you like, analysis that would give you a uh, average. Alright. Now you could take uh, 30 days worth of averages and you could even calculate a, uh, standard deviations if you wanted to. You need to have at least um, uh, at least 40 of them actually if you really wanted a good analysis. Alright. That's your basic information on how to use a Geiger counter. There are a couple other kinds that you might be interested in, and I'll show you as I get mine, but some of the Geiger counters have a big, big, wide circle in the end, usually with a wand on it and a big circle. The inspector model, if you turn it upside down, has a big, big circular area right here with a metal mesh over it. Those are, by the way, called pancake Geiger Mueller tubes, and they're big, big, wide things, and they have a huge surface area, and because they have more surface area, remember what I said, more surface area means they click more. Like The, the inspector, uh, uh, for example, from the same company as this, will click about three times for every normal click that you'd get. And the number will be three times higher. And that's perfectly acceptable and normal. So take that into account when you're doing your readings. Make sure to contact me if you have any questions on how these things operate. And then um, buy one and have fun using it. They can be a lot of fun and they're perfectly safe. So um, they don't, they're not radioactive in any way. They're just a Geiger counter. They detect it. You wouldn't want a smoke alarm that was, on, that was already smoking, would you? So this has been Tom from anti-proton.com. Um, let me know if you have any questions, and have fun. Bye-bye.